So again, ar around the, the newly diagnosed patients and what we do, um, Tim, tell me about brain meds. I mean, you know that for some of the targeted therapies, um, you know, we'll start with the targeted therapies and forego radiation up front. Um, um, what's your thinking about um, brain meds and a newly diagnosed patient, how we do that in the context of uh, immunotherapy? Can we, do we radiate them first? Can we do them at the same time? Do you wait for the immunotherapy to work and hold the radiation? What's your approach? Yeah, so you know, I, I urge my medical oncology colleagues to have me see these patients um, because there, there are differences in terms of size, location, um, symptom burden that kind of drive that decision. You know, I, I see a lot of melanoma brain met patients, and unlike that scenario where you, you know the response rates are 55, 60 percent to dual agent checkpoint, uh, the data in, for response in single agent immunotherapy and, and lung cancer is more 20, 25 percent. Um, so we have a lower threshold for using radiation up front. You know, if we see two, three millimeter brain mets in non-eloquent locations, I'll watch those. Um, you know, we'll get a six or eight week MRI and see where things are going. Um, so it's case by case, uh, depending on the disease burden, also you know, performance status and the extracranial disease burden of the patient as well. And can we give immunotherapy at the same time as radiation? It's often a call from the community, I want to need to radiate a lung lesion or brain lesion or bone lesion. Can we do it at the same time or do we need to hold treatment or delay treatment? Well, we've got increasingly comfortable uh, giving it simultaneously. So there is a lot of retrospective data looking at palliative radiation in the setting of people on immunotherapy um, that suggests non-overlapping toxicity and increasingly prospective data um, looking at high-dose radiation in the setting of even chemoimmunotherapy um, a phase one study just came out uh, looking at, an, at that in locally advanced patients. So we essentially radiate away based on the uh, clinical scenario without uh, too much um, concern for immunotherapy related reactions. So Tim, if I can ask, you know, I mean, this topic is so important. So radiating a bone is different than like radiating brain or lung. I mean, with your answer, is that across the board or are there specifics to that? Do you feel as comfortable with brain as you do with bone or are there differences? Well, I only choose to radiate things that I'm going to potentially clinically benefit the patient. So, um, you know, I if there's a symptomatic brain met or a brain met that's growing through systemic therapy, um, my thought is that the, the benefit of a local control is going to outweigh some potential risk of uh, radiation necrosis, which does seem to be augmented by immunotherapy. So your point is not uh, not without merit, um, but we can salvage radiation necrosis down the road with steroids or avastin. I, I mean, concurrent with checkpoint inhibitor uh, is what you'd be doing. So generally, if someone's getting checkpoint inhibitor and they're going to get radiation to their brain, I've held checkpoint inhibitor. If, if someone's getting even SBRT to a bone met, I'm more comfortable continuing the checkpoint through that. Um, we certainly have concurrent, you know, in lung, we're actually getting more comfortable with this as, as well. And there are trials now where we're seeing concurrent radiation with checkpoint and even chemo dur during that time. Um, but brain, I've been, I've been more hesitant about. But, but if we, based on the pharmacology here, the drugs in their system, if somebody's mm -hmm. on checkpoint inhibitor, it's a long half-life, so I can hold the drug on the day of their SRS, but I'm not changing the 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 half the steady state in their body by doing so. So, and also their T cells are activated. Some data say for a year, so I don't know that I'm doing anything if I hold the drug. So I tend not to. Yeah, that's been my rationale as well. Um, you know, if there's a clinical indication and we know the immunotherapy is in their system and active, and we seem to think they're they're benefiting from the immunotherapy, we continue it um, and, and radiate and, and watch. And if we need to withhold at some point because of a radiation related side effects that warrant steroids, you know, we do that reactively rather than proactively try to minimize that. Yeah, right. I agree. We don't, uh, we don't tend to hold because we haven't really seen that holding makes much difference. I guess the other side of that is that if someone misses a dose for the same reasons, you're probably not harming them in any way by missing one. So if I'm seeing someone, when they're getting whole brain radiation or, or, or uh, even SRS to the brain or something, um, to hold a dose of Pembro during that time, I see as minimal risk as well. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't think we 
quite know the answer, particularly around brain, but I agree that we're getting more and more comfortable with radiation along with check 